How's it going everybody? My name's Eric and in this video we're gonna do a step-by-step -step order on eBay using the FedEx shipping option. We're gonna be shipping this big package. It's actually a VCR that sold on eBay. By the end of this video, I want you to be able to kind of get an understanding of why and when you would use FedEx. We're gonna go over the different service options and the uses for those specific service options. And then we will step-by-step -step buy a label for this VCR through eBay that's an actual real label that I'm shipping out today. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. If you aren't already subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing and let's get into the computer. So here we are on the computer. We've already pulled up the eBay order. If you don't know how to get to this screen, then just from the regular eBay home screen signed in, you could hover over this bell and it should populate your orders that you need to ship. So when and why would you be shipping FedEx? Big, heavier packages. If it's something that's a VCR size or bigger, I would recommend using FedEx if FedEx is closest to you in proximity. Maybe you live by a FedEx office or some sort of other FedEx building. Maybe you live by a Walgreens because Walgreens can actually take FedEx packages as well. You take it to the photo counter, hand it over, they'll scan it in and text or email you the acceptance. You could also go with UPS if you live close to a UPS drop off. You'll see, we'll do a comparison once we type in our dimensions to show you why USPS is not really the option. But before that, I would like to show you guys a little bit of this interface and go over the FedEx options. Just because we're picking FedEx doesn't mean there's just like one thing to pick. There's, I think, five different FedEx or maybe more FedEx options through eBay. To get rid of all of these services, it's got a ton of services. We're going to just click off these to make them from purple to the grayish color. So that's kind of just showing us all the FedEx. Here is what the buyer selected, FedEx Ground. This is a service that is great for heavy, big packages, something that's a VCR size or bigger. And if something is smaller than a VCR, small and heavy, it could be good for this as well. It just depends and you can always compare it to USPS to see which rate is gonna be better. With FedEx Ground, you've gotta be shipping it to a business address. You cannot ship it to residential. If you accidentally do ship it to residential, FedEx will probably catch it, tack on some extra fees and charges, which will have made it more expensive than it would have been if you had just picked FedEx home delivery to begin with, which is this rate down here. It's not allowing me to pick FedEx home delivery because I believe eBay recognized the address as a business address and you cannot ship FedEx home delivery to business addresses. So what do I mean by a business address? Well, if you take the address of where you're shipping it to, you can copy it, open up Google Maps, paste it in there, make sure you have the map on satellite, you can toggle it down here, and just look at where that address is. Is it in a business part of town or an industrial part of town? or is it in a residential part of town? That'll kind of give you the idea of if it's a business or a residential address. So ours is over here next to a gym and a chicken place. So we can be pretty sure that this is a business address. If for some reason it was over here, it would be a residential address. So that's kind of when you would be using ground versus home delivery. They're both gonna be better rates for heavy stuff. Just one's going to a residence, which is easier to remember because it's called home delivery. Uh, but FedEx ground, you just will have to remember that it's businesses only. So one of the limitations on ground and home delivery are that they cannot ship to a PO box. That's where FedEx Smart Post comes in. This is a shipping service that uses FedEx's hubs and trucks as well as the post office for the final delivery. The post office is the one that actually will hand deliver it to the address or the PO box. And these rates are normally a lot closer to if you were just to pick USPS, maybe slight variation. I don't really recommend using Smart Post. I've heard nightmare scenarios about packages taking forever, getting lost. There's a little bit confusion about where you drop it off. If you drop it off at FedEx or you drop it off at USPS. From my experience, you can drop this off at FedEx, no problem. And you also can drop it off if, at USPS if they take it, but I think it will get there faster if you drop it off at a FedEx because FedEx will use their network first and then they'll hand it off to USPS to do the final delivery. And I think that'll get your package there faster. So if you do use Smart Posts, I would recommend dropping it off at FedEx and do be aware that it does not include that insurance uh, up to $100. FedEx Smart Post normally takes longer than ground and home delivery. FedEx two day is supposed to get your package or letter there in two days. So it's if you're trying to get it there super fast. I've never used that on eBay. 
FedEx standard overnight, same thing. You're supposed to get it there in one night. I've never used that on eBay as well. And priority overnight is like a higher tier than standard overnight. And I've never used that on eBay as well. I've never used these three in the many, 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 many years of selling on eBay. I've only used smart post ground and home delivery. And if you look at right here, QR code, it gives you another option that we will talk about later in the video. It gives you a nice little coverage chart, what they cover as insurance up to that dollar amount. And as you can see, smart post has a zero and a and FedEx home delivery has a zero dollar coverage. And that gives you a price readout. Once we type in our dimensions, these are just estimated dimensions. These are not correct. We're going to correct these in a second. And then estimated delivery is basically how long it's going to take to get there. Let's get the correct dimensions and weight in here with FedEx. For pounds, you're going to want to round up. You do not want to use fractional pound ounces. And my package is indeed 12 pounds, seven ounces. So I'm rounding that up to 13 pounds. You will need a postal scale to do this. So if you don't already have one, I will put a link to one in the description. It is crucial. They're very cheap. They're like 20 something bucks. They last you years and years. If you're going to be selling on eBay, you're going to have to get one. So I would just recommend getting one if you don't already have one. So dimensions, you're going to want to measure it out with a measuring tape. And this, you're going to want to round up up to the next inch because as you can see, there's no fractional dimension on FedEx. And if they catch your weight or your dimensions off, you'd rather be over than under because then they can hit you with a fee of something. And I have been hit with that fee before. But from my experience, I would say round up. And ours is actually 19 and a half inches. So I'm gonna round it to 20 and then it's 14 and 1 16th. So I'm gonna round that to 15. And then ours is 12 and 3 eighths. So I'm gonna round that to 13 inches and just click off of that. And there we go, everything updated in here. Make sure your ship from address is correct. Once you have these dimensions in, you, you can see that the prices update for all of these different FedEx rates. And as you can see, FedEx ground is the cheapest. Let's just for kicks, add the USPS option to see what it would be added and would not be a flat rate. It would not be flat rate. It would just be USPS priority. And that would be $40 because it's a VCR. It's not going to fit in a flat rate envelope. It's not going to fit in any of these carrier packages. These are all boxes that USPS supplies and it's not going to fit in any of those. It would be this USPS priority mail. So it'd be 40 bucks. So definitely not going to be doing that. I'm going to be going with this FedEx ground, $14.52. A little bit more of the interface. If you want to print a packing slip, you can click right here. It'll come up with this packing slip. You can put a thank you on there if you want. There's a couple more options for you to do. Print a nice little packing slip. Makes it look a little bit more professional. I personally don't do it, but it's there for the option. You go over here. You can change your ship from address if you hit edit. If you go to this drop down, you can see the buyer, you can see what they selected, you can see the order value, you can see what they paid for shipping when it's expected delivery date is, and down here, the print format. So if you need to change your print format, normally it's gonna be eight and a half, 11. This is for inkjet and laser printers. And if you need to change it to four by six for thermal printers, you could click that and hit save. It will save those settings for this label and any subsequent labels in the future. You can change your ship from date. If you're not gonna be shipping from today, you can change it to a future date. I've never really had an issue with them accepting a package that was said it was gonna be shipped in one date and I actually dropped it off the next day, but there's the drop down if for sure you know you're gonna be dropping it off at a future date. Right here where it says an additional option, you can get signature confirmation, indirect or an adult signature. There's the prices for that. You can add a message in the dispatch email if you want to say thank you or something. I'm be putting signature confirmation on it. This was only a $130 order. And right here, shipping label format. It's a pretty interesting option that eBay has now. So if you're just gonna print the label out at home, you have a regular printer, you have a thermal printer, you're going to click this option. But if you don't have a printer, you wanna stand in line at FedEx, you can click this option right here. Check with your nearby FedEx locations. You can type in your zip code here to see if your FedEx near you is supported with this QR code feature. And then you can also check to see if your label is supported with this QR code feature. And it looks like everything is supported except for FedEx home delivery. That one is not. So any of these, you could print the label out at FedEx and they will just slap it on your package for you. I do have a video showing that, which I will put in the description if you wanna check that out, where I actually like go to a post office. I didn't go to a FedEx because I don't even think FedEx had that at the time. I went to a post office and did this and you can check out that video if you want to. Here's your terms of service. You're gonna have to accept that. So we're gonna purchase the shipping label. Oh crap, 
I accidentally did QR code. So I picked QR code, but it gave me a QR code and a shipping label. So if I wanted to bring this to a FedEx, I could take a picture of this QR code right here with my cell phone and bring it to FedEx and they will print the label out for me. But I do have a printer, so I'm going to open this shipping label. I'm going to hit this printer button here. I'm going to send it to my label printer. Make sure my paper size is in four by six. Send it to my label printer, print that label out. The tracking is automatically uploaded to the order. So our label printed. Now all you gotta do is take it off, stick it to your package, and now I'm gonna have to drop this off at FedEx or Walgreens because Walgreens accepts FedEx packages and Office Depot and Staples also accept FedEx packages. If you don't have a label printer, you can just tape your label onto your package. That's perfectly fine. And if you're doing the QR code thing, take it to your FedEx location that accepts the QR code thing and you should be good to go. I know that was a long video. It was a lot of information to cover, especially showing the step-by-step -step interface. I do hope that this was helpful to somebody out there because shipping can be super confusing and you will get better at it with time, I promise you. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. If you have any questions about the tutorial, put them in the comments section and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.